or even desire to be, but to be in His presence. Amen. Praise God. Just make myself a little comfortable on this chair. Praise God. Amen. Is the announcement okay? We've got the uh, announcements on the same uh, where the messages and the same uh, stick. So, praise the Lord. Uh, anybody can remember last week's sermon? What was the message? As his Pray. name is, so is he. As his name is, so is he. Anybody knows yeah. where that scripture is found? Uh, what? Isaiah. No. It's simple. Many of the um, verses, catchy, so-called, are very uh, nice, uh, easy to remember verses. Uh, for example, Deuteronomy 29, 29 is, uh, okay, you can just, so you find uh, the uh, 29, 29 says, the secret things belong unto the Lord. So in 1 Samuel 25, I think it's 25. Then it says, as his name is so is he, Nabal <coughs> is his name, and Folly is what? As his name. What is the name of the DVD you all uh, uh, watched last week? It's a long title, but I give my own title. It, Donnie Reagan. It was the church, and I said, uh, The Enforcer. I think it was a powerful message. And I also told you last week that we're going to listen to somebody play DVD this week. Any idea who? The DVD I was going to give you this week. <coughs> the brother that had brain tumor. The one that uh, was at Burns, you know, a testimony he gave. I will pray for a lot of people as well. Uh, is it brother Ron Spencer? Ron Spencer. You can listen to that DVD it's at the back. That's after he had the brain tumor. I told you all as well that he had the brain off. And the very following week, Sunday, he was in church. In this DVD, he also mentioned that he doesn't drive. His wife doesn't allow him to drive. So, uh, yet, he's in the pulpit preaching. And he preached very, very good. So you might look at certain uh, issues in your life, certain instances, certain problems, and you might think it's too much for you to bear. But when these people have actually uh, done. And on Tuesday, the tape that you're supposed to listen to, Brother Branham's message, I think it was a powerful tape. It's worth, worth listening over again. Any idea what was the name of the tape? Atmos vision, very powerful. And uh, we did have some quotes that we sent on last Sunday, we used from there. And uh, this week we're going to listen to a tape, uh, on Tuesday, it's the one before the Patmos vision, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we got quote, quotes on that uh, today that we would like to listen. Uh, so, uh, so that you could whet your appetite. Uh, some other quotes we did mention previously, uh, a few times, many times, appeared in the last week's DVD in that position. Remember the, now as the 20 people are buying, uh, um, what's a tablet for zinc? Because it's a, a boost, immune booster and things like that because of the uh, flu that's around the uh, uh, virus, uh, but there's a spiritual virus and the immune booster is the message of the hour. Amen. So faith comes by hearing, by hearing the Amen. word of God. Amen. So it's important for us to feed on the spiritual food. Man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Uh, this uh, morning we're going to speak on the subject, same continuing the subject about the name of Jesus, but we'd like to uh, entitle this portion of the message as Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the Old Testament. Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you. We want to serve you. And we've come here to hear your word. Lord, may you pour forth your revelation, the unfolding of your word, the unfolding of yourself. Open up our understanding yes. that we may know who you are, that we may believe you, that we may take you at your word, and above all, that we may invite you to dwell in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our trespasses. Help our unbelief. Bless us, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New. Praise God. In fact, uh, it might be sort of common knowledge to us today but you find in the time of Jesus it was not common knowledge you find uh, in today in the uh, denomination world it is not common knowledge Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament Amen. God had to speak to brother Branham and reveal to him and tell him that the uh, that the Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. He, uh, you know, in, not that he had to prove it from the Bible, and we will read the quote in the message that we, we want to listen on Tuesday. He says, you, re you really need a revelation to understand that Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. He says, for baptism, you do not need a revelation. It is plain to see. Amen. But to understand Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament, then you find it is uh, uh, important for us to understand that. Praise the name of the Lord. Just to recap a little bit of what we said last week. Uh, as his name is, so is he. The name it brings up the character. Elvis means cat, I think, or rat. And Ricky means cat or rat, one or the other. So be careful how you name your children because that is how they're going to behave. Uh, now, also, we uh, people have got, uh, as the old days, we say school name and calling name and house name and all that. Uh, so the name that affects you is the name that is used often that you call because of the pronunciation of the word, the name, and the, the vibrations or whatever it is, and the sound, it has an effect. So we've, how the names are pronounced or has an effect, it makes a difference. So as his name is, so is he. Now God laid down rules in the Bible, laws in the Bible, and many things there, it is just for us, it is to lay his plan. For example, in Ephesians, he talks about the husband and wife. Husband should uh, love his wife. The wife should reverence her husband. And he went on. But he, 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 he ends it up there saying, you know what? I am really speaking of Christ and the church. Amen. Not really about the husband and wife, but I'm using Amen. the husband and wife as a type. But in, because the bigger picture is Christ and the church. We won't focus on how he's talking about wife, how he's talking about husband, but he's talking about Christ and the church. Amen. And he said, but nevertheless, it's okay, I'm talking about Christ and the church, but still, the husband must love his wife Amen. and the wife must reverence her husband. So everything is type in the Bible. You find the life of Joseph was a type of the life of Jesus. Amen. The type of the life of uh, Moses was a type of the life of Jesus. Amen. Of all the prophets, we can go to the types as time goes on, and we'll see uh, they were reflecting 
something that was to come. They were the uh, uh, foreshadowing. The real thing was Jesus. Amen. The real thing was Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible also tells us a prophet is without honor in his own country. And Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. Oh, we know him. Uh, Joseph, isn't he the carpenter's son? Joseph, the carpenter's son. We know him. We don't think anybody here could be famous, become famous, or become great. Because they know oh, because you think you are not great. But he came to his own according to the scripture and they failed to see it. They failed to follow through. They failed to and so then the gospel came to the Gentiles. And even today, uh, if we begin to understand the importance of the name of Jesus, it will make a big difference in our lives. So Jehovah began to unfold himself. In the beginning, he was just a fountain of seven colors. Nobody could see with the naked eye. Then he unveiled himself uh, or unfolded himself into this uh, light that is called the Logos, which is called the Son of God, which is called the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So when we couldn't be seen, he got into something that could be seen, although not with the naked eye, but could be seen. Uh, it was the Logos, invisible image, image of the invisible God. Then from there, he unfolded himself further. When he said, let us make man in our image, he unfolded himself into Adam. Adam was like God. He could live forever. But when he sinned, accepted Eve and did whatever was wrong there, and uh, God withdrew his spirit, the Logos, then he was just a flesh. And then that is why he could die. He died, he unfolded. And he began to unfold in Joseph, a part of his life, and different people in the Bible unfolding. Then he also began to reveal himself to Abraham as uh, Jehovah Jireh the Lord will provide the lamb came out of nowhere caught in a thicket it was Joe he began to unfold himself his person and uh, in many other names the seven compound names as we said and more than that seven names he unfolded himself further in like Melchizedek full-grown man he unfolded himself in uh, to Daniel in the the lions then Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego to Benoah, uh, Samson's father, and uh, all these people as they saw him as an angel of the Lord. And he was constantly unfolding himself in a different way, expressing himself, and he reflected his character. He reflected his nature until Jesus came. Then the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily in him. Every prophet's life was typed in Jesus Christ. Every uh, person who was like a son of God or whatever appeared in Old Testament was fulfilled. He was like Melchizedek. Thank you. He was like Melchizedek and uh, everybody else that was there. That's exactly what Jesus did. Amen. So the scripture verse we're going to read from is verse Genesis 32, verse 29. Before that, Can we have the slide number eight? The one before the title. Genesis 32 verse 29. It says, And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him. People wanted to know what his name was. In the book of Acts, they were even praying to the unknown God. And uh, 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 Paul tells them, you know what, uh, 
that unknown God I came to declare to you. That unknown God I came to declare to you. John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Notice, I am is Elohim, the self-existing one. And before Abraham, so Jesus was not now, 2,000 years ago. Before Abraham. Abraham, before Moses. Moses came about 4,000 years before, almost 4,000 years before Christ. And uh, Abraham was before that. He says, before Abraham, even if they were at the audacity to tell him, uh, before, uh, you know, you don't even look 50 years old. He was 33 years when he died. So all down through the ages, when people wanted to know more about God, they thought, uh, they sought after his name. Because that would have reflected who he is. You find you name a child Ricky, you, you, and you look at all that Ricky, they quite arrogant and all that, you know, that name. So sometimes we have a funny name, but it's better to change it, you know. But we don't normally recommend other people to change average. But if you see if your child's behavior is not right, then maybe the name has an influence. So the, the seek after them because, you know, they've got to give honor to that person. Uh, uh, the dictionary, interpreter's dictionary says, to know the name of God is to know God as he revealed himself. When used of God, name of the Old, Old Testament as a revelatory content. In other words, God is revealing himself in the name. When people wanted to know, more about God, they sought to know his name. Moses, many other people said, who are you, Lord? Because they wanted to know his name to know whether they're dealing with the right person. Moses and God told Je I am Jehovah, that I am who I am. I will reveal myself as a deliverer to the children of Israel. And Abraham didn't know me in the revelation of this name. But I'm going to reveal myself. Over and over throughout the scriptures, it was the name of the Lord that the people sought to know him by. Manoah, slide number 13. Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? And when thy sayings has come to pass, what we may do the other. What is thy name? In First Kings 8.43 I hear thou, thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth thee for that all the people of the earth may know thy name and fear thee to do thy people Israel and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. So the name was important. The Lord willing, uh, next week I will speak on, uh, we can only worship at the place where God put his name. And we'll see whether it's a church or what is he talking about. In the slide number 16, when I was going squirrel hunting that morning, and there it was, them three big stems run into one out there, right on the mountain, natural type of the spiritual. Uh, and uh, me standing there looking at it, and I drew up close and took off my hat, laid down my rifle, got up there, and a voice shook the woods and said, Jesus of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old. Amen. Remain faithful. Amen. I mean, God won't repeat scripture for nothing, but he was trying to explain something. So right below there is where the squirrels appeared. Jehovah, 
the spoken word, the creator, right there was where the scrolls appeared. Coming to existence when they were uh, none there, that's a truth, that's true. So God knows before who I stand, it's a truth. That's right, it's a truth. Other places also he says about, you know, where God told him that. The next slide, number 16, the identified masterpiece of God. He came, Jesus, to reflect God. He was the image of the invisible God. And the Father was the Word. Amen. Now I feel religious. He came to reflect the Father's Word. God said He would be there. And there He was, the perfect masterpiece of God. Great handiwork. Oh my, He was the perfect reflection of Him. He reflects everything that God had spoken of. He reflected what Adam said about him. He reflected about all the prophets said, about all the patriarchs and everything that he said. He was the fulfillment of the Amen. word. All types are fulfilled in him. Yea, he became Jehovah of the New Testament. He was the Old Testament Jehovah, the word then, which was the prayer fire, was made manifest and dwelt among us. Jehovah of the Old Testament became Jesus of the New Testament. He was a perfect reflection of God. Amen. It was a perfect reflection of God. So he fulfilled everything that was in everybody else's life. We can show the type, but what is the purpose? He was, like you look at an elephant, and someone said, elephant is a trunk. Elephant got four legs. Elephant got a tail. Elephant got big ears. Different things. It might think there's different animals in the sky. But put all together, they're talking about the elephant. All that the prophet's lives, all was a fulfillment in Jesus Christ. In the, this is a table listing, the revelation of Jesus Christ, slide number 17. Now that is the revelation. Jesus Christ is God. It might seem all that to you, but we explain it. Uh, the Job of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New. It's not the second person of the Godhead. Job of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New. No matter how hard you try, you can't prove there are three gods. But it also takes a revelation by the Holy Spirit to make you understand the truth that he is one. Amen. It takes a revelation to see that Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New. Satan crept into the church and blinded the people to this truth. And when they were uh, blinded to it, it wasn't long until the church of Rome stopped baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan blinded them. So you feel sorry for some of the people. You can't uh, be angry with them. You can explain to them if they don't see it, they don't see it. It's a revelation. And maybe given time they might see. He goes on the same message, the next slide. Slide 18. I admit that it takes a real revelation from the Holy Ghost to see the truth about the God. So when you can see it, that means you already got a revelation. Not it, because it takes the revelation to see it. These days when we are in the midst of perverting of so much scripture, but the prevailing overcoming church is built on revelation. Amen. So we can expect God to reveal his truth to us. However, you actually don't need a revelation on water baptism. It's right there staring you in the face. Yet people don't get baptized. People don't, uh, uh, you know, talk about this and you know, leftism and things yet. They, I, I, there's no way. Uh, Brother Francis and them preach, you know, open air meetings, and they also uh, now they're doing it on uh, YouTube and all that because of the shut, uh, lockdown. I heard them say, if you go there, they'll say it as well. I heard them say they will. They sell cars too. He said, they'll give them a brand new car if somebody can show that this 
any scripture where someone was baptized in the title of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If there's no cut off day, it's to say competition grows a certain day. No, they can never show it. To put that, Amen. you know, sometimes when I'm counseling couples, I did one presentation on Friday, and sometimes I ask them, okay, uh, as usual, I ask you all and everybody, what is half of two plus two? They say two. I said, can you bet your life? They said, yes. They think it's just a saying. I said, how much money you got? Uh, sometimes they haven't got, so how much money you got in the bank, or this, you're getting married now, what's a month? So they say, uh, that the one guy previous to that, I uh, asked him how much you got, he said, it's 7,000 in the bank to help the wedding. I said, would you uh, bet the 7,000 that half of two plus two is two? He said, no. I said, you know what, you, you love money more than your life. <laughs> we prepare to put your life on the on that, uh, line and uh, you, you, you don't want to put the money because money is more. And his wife said, yeah, he loves money. <laughs> <laughs> so how we, what we do is a reflection of uh, who we are. You might say, well, you know, the, like as uh, uh, we, the children tell me, as, you know, we, uh, lots of people say this, you know what, I am not racist. And then you make a statement. But, I do follow the word, but. Yeah. So people who say that, they say, ah, racist. most of the people are racist, whether we like it or not. But we will try to put something, I am not racist. And then we'll say something. So when we say something, it's an indication. Not to say it straight without saying uh, the fact right. that what racist or whatever it is. So you find it takes a real revelation from the Holy Ghost to see the truth about the God. And I'll be very honest with you, I told you many times not to be critical. Uh, I think a lot of people, even in the message of the hour, I think we are a little different here. But a lot of people in the message of the hour, even people who minister the word, don't have a revelation of the God. They, not that just one, but it's a little more complicated because it has to, uh, it, you That's need a revelation for that. You need the revelation, it's going to be. And hopefully we'll go through some of these things and we'll understand. When Jehovah came to earth and dwelled in a man called Jesus Christ, God had once again expressed himself by unfolding yet another revelation of the name Jehovah. I want you to turn to your Bible to so Matthew 121. This is found in the 21st slide. Slide number 21. Matthew 121. Everybody got it? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name. Right. Now the word Jesus. Is it all capitals or all small or is the J in capital only? All capitals. all capitals. So what does it tell us in the Old Testament when the word Jehovah? How do you know that they, they made the change the word from Jehovah to Lord? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. So whenever you see that in the Bible, it's the original word was Jehovah. But it is capital L, small letter O, small letter R, small letter D, it's meaning something else, not Jehovah in particular. And the only other place they use all capitals is in Jesus. It's not a coincidence. Amen. For he shall save his people from their sins. The name of Jesus is capitalized, like the Lord in the Old Testament. Jesus means Jehovah Savior. Showing that God was coming to dwell among us as a man. God was coming to dwell among us as a man. With the express purpose to save his people from their sins. You find, uh, you probably saw this clip, uh, you know, on 
uh, Facebook or things like that. There was one pastor he, in a nice plush church. He came outside the church and he, he dressed up like a beggar, you know, sitting outside the people, mm, smelling or, you know, didn't like it, and, uh, upset and things like that. And then uh, he, while the service was on, nobody gave him any money or anything. While the service was on, he came to the front. There were two incidences. One, the, the guy came in the front. No, it wasn't a pastor, it was a, a, a real beggar. And you said nobody said anything. He came to the front and he began to kneel and pray. People didn't know what to do. What would you have done? Say he, deacon, somebody beggar now, unclean clothes, smelling, and you know, he come here and he oh boy, walk in the front now. And then he bowing down now, he kneeling, praying. The deacon, People are talking to one another, look at him, how he can do that, what he's, you know, criticize him. The deacon walked up to him, got on his knees, put his hand over him, and began to pray. It Amen. made a difference. This other church that the uh, pastor had played like a beggar, beard, everything, untidy, torn clothes, and packets, and all that, and nobody gave him any money. And while the service on, he came to the front. And he decided to hold him, pushed his way to the pulpit. But one or two people was aware, you know, the person was speaking or whatever there. So they know they gave him the mic. And then he began to talk to them. And when he spoke to them, they recognized his voice. First of all, how can this guy come like this? And, and then they realized, you know, if the pastor there was a beggar there, they would have ignored him. If Jesus was the beggar, what would they have done? It's, it shows our attitude towards yes, many of these people. It shows our attitude. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. So when Jehovah came to earth, he was coming as Savior, and he took on a name that would characterize his work as Redeemer. None of the other people were Redeemer. They tried to save the people, tried to do it. Moses went there, and he, he, di uh, he died before seeing the Promised Land. Joseph was there. He died before they could leave the promised land. He knew they were going to leave the promised land. He said, I'm going to take my bones. Everybody fell short. But Jesus came as the Redeemer. He had to die to become a Redeemer because uh, the penalty of sin was death. The Old Testament spoke to, of him as a Redeemer. But man had not known him fully as a Savior. Natural things, the way in physical bondage, and he took them out, they knew that, but as a savior for the soul, for the sins, they didn't know. For man had not yet been redeemed. Complete redemption was not realized under the blood of bulls and goats, Amen. as animal blood could not atone for sin, it could not come inside you. I know a lot of people, you know, they cut the chicken, they eat the blood. Fry it and have it. Yet it, uh, the No, I don't even eat the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Indian people eat, eat, eat that, right? I don't know. I don't think they eat the goat and sheep blood and all of that, and all of that. But the life, the Bible says, is in the blood. And the life from that sheep or goat or whatever cannot come in the human being. That's why we still add the attitude, you know. A uh, negative attitude. The, if we came with a bad attitude, uh, wrong attitude, the, uh, I need to steal and to do things, we went, although we brought offering, we went away with the same because there was no change on the inside. The life that was in that land could not come, could not change the sinner's nature. Israel had never known God as a savior from sins. Israel had previously only known God as one who saved them from slavery, Egypt. But still needed to be redeemed from Amen. the slavery of sin. Amen. No redemption from sin. You would know God in the revelation of the name of, G of Jesus as Savior. Amen. Israel is one of the most powerful nations. God is still with it. But they still don't know God as Savior. 
as I said, pre, pre, Prime Minister Netanyahu now is doing Bible studies and all that with the people. It was of tremendous importance because those Jewish believers who had previously known of Jehovah would now need to know God as Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The Old Testament, God was not personal, pillar of fire, uh, you know, all those things. He was not something personal. He was God over them. When Jesus came, he was God with them. Amen. But now he is God in us. Amen. He was God with them in Jesus. Jehovah Savior. To know him only as Jehovah, who has revealed himself through the prophets, was no longer sufficient for salvation. Amen. You can build an ark, you're not going to get saved. You put blood on the door, it's not going to save you. Whatever they did in the Old Testament was acceptable for that age. Amen. Today it is coming through Jesus Christ. Amen. Not by belonging to a church, organization, things like that, but believing in Amen. Jesus Christ. They had to know him now as Jesus, the Son of God. I, I didn't count this up, I'm going to do that. If you put the Son of God, and see how many times the word Son of God there in reference to Jesus. You won't find it says Jesus, God the Son. God, God the Son. Amen. That's right. But the Son of God. Amen. We'll explain that some other time. The Savior of the world. Jehovah of the Old Testament had taken a new name, Jesus. He had taken a new name. Amen. His circumstances change. A lady gets married. She takes on the name of the husband. A new name. Jehovah had to come to earth and took on flesh for the purpose of salvation. Mankind was now required to know God in the revelation of his new name. Got to know him in that. Not because you're a Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist. Only in the name of Jesus could men be saved. This agrees with the Old Testament, Hosea 13 verse 14. He says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. Amen. For there is no Savior besides me. Amen. So if Jesus is a Savior, he says, Not thy God. Amen. <laughs> There's no Savior, it's God Amen. Himself. Jesus had to be, the name of God had to be Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He was not one of the three, set of three persons comprising a single God. When Saul saw him on the road in Acts chapter 22 verse 16, he says, the, And now why tarriest thou? And then I is telling him, Paul relating the story in Acts 22 16. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. Now the question is, what is the name of the Lord? Amen. Paul should know. Because early on, in Acts chapter 9, when he met the pillar of fire on the road to Damascus, the first thing is he is a Jew. He knows only one Lord, Jehovah. He said, who art thou, Lord? Maybe you are another God, Lord. And the voice from the pillar of fire said, I am Jesus. Amen. Whom thou persecutest. So when he said, when Ananias told him, uh, calling on the name of the Lord, there was no problem with the Paul. He knew the name of the Lord was Jesus. Not Jehovah. Acts chapter 9 5. From the Damascus Road encounter, he learned that the Lord of the Old Testament was the same Lord of the New Testament. And he realized that name was Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, God was revealing himself in the expression of his name, Jehovah, the Savior. Jesus. And he came to his own, the Bible says, Israel, nation of Israel, and his own received him not. 
if Jesus had come as a prophet, as the Muslims say he was a prophet and not God, if Jesus had come as a prophet, as did Elijah, as did Moses, preaching about Jehovah of the Old Testament, most probably they would have received him. There would have been people that they wouldn't like him, like Dathan and Korah and all that. But if he came as a prophet, they would have, the people rejected him, his own people, nobody stood up for him. Even when Pilate said, you know, well, I, I set one person free during this time, I find no fault in him. I set people free, what, you know, what do you, who you want, uh, Barabbas, a murderer and a thief. And they said, uh, what must we do, Jesus uh, crucified. Stand up by the chief priests and elders. So it wasn't like they received him. And the reason right. being, he didn't come in his own name. Amen. They received Moses after complaining about him. But you find with Jesus, they don't receive him at all. They would more, most probably would not receive him. Would receive him. Would most probably received him if he came as a prophet. But Jehovah had come as the savior and they would not have salvation outside of that name, in any other name, but the name of Jesus. Next uh, slide, 30. John 5, 43, you will remember this. When we're doing baptism, we'll come to it. I'll come in my Father's name, and you'll receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Come in the Father's name. Now, what name did he come? No other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. So what's his Father's name? Jesus. Amen. Confirmed it to Paul on the road to Damascus. Next. Well, remember God won't share his glory. John Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. God would not share his glory with anyone. How can he make somebody greater than him? Some people may say, oh yeah, it's under heaven, that's why. But he said, thy will be done on earth even, as it is in heaven. Even as it is in heaven. Even as it is in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. So it must be done there as it is in heaven. John chapter 8, the next slide. And he said unto them, You are from beneath. Amen, amen. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Amen. I said therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins. No savior. Die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he. Amen. Great God. Amen. I am Elohim. I am he. Who's he? What sin? Well, when it came to stone him, he said, "Which sin? What have I done that you want to stone me?" Anybody knows? Uh, he said, "Thou being a man, makes yourself God." Exactly. They didn't realize it was Amen. God who became a man. Amen. They said, "You being a man," they realized there's some connection, but they thought he's fully realized it. Was fully realize it. Yeah. They, they thought he's yeah. overplaying his role. He think he's great. You know? You shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he. You shall die in your sins. Then he said, then they said unto him, What thou? <laughs> no, okay. He's telling them, you don't believe I am he. Thou don't want to know who is he, who are you. Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I, I, that means you are Jehovah, you are saying, I have many things to say to you and to judge you of, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. In other words, he is pleading with them to save themselves. Amen. Amen. So Jesus was saying very clearly, unless you recognize me as Jehovah, yes. the Savior, Die Not Jehovah, Jairah and all that, but Jehovah the Savior, you will die in your sins. Why? Because they got no Savior. Save. 
that still holds true today. If you Amen. don't realize the Amen. most important thing, cannot, that's why the message said you cannot get to first base unless you realize the deity Amen. of Jesus Christ. He was in the spirit, he was deity. In the flesh, he was a man. 100% God, 100% man. Amen. Now, you've got to believe that, that he was Jehovah God. He was not just a prophet. Amen. Not that personal God yet. He was God himself. Amen. In times past, there was only one God and he spoke through the prophets. In the days of his earthly pilgrimage, there was but one God and he spoke through Jesus Christ. You know what? Jesus never said, Thus saith the Lord. Ezekiel said, Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Every other prophet said, Thus saith the Lord. Brother Branham said, Thus saith the Lord. Because there's a difference between them and God. Amen. He Amen. was God Himself. Everything Amen. was Thus saith the Lord. Amen. He didn't have to say, Thus saith the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hebrews, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 1. We're looking at uh, slide number 34. Hebrews chapter 1. People will use this verse to say there's no prophet to come. We'll deal with that. Some, some people also say Paul was not a prophet. And uh, uh, because he called himself an apostle. He unfolded most of the New Testament. Amen. Surely the Lord God was nothing but to reveal his secret unto his servants of prophets. Amen. He had to be a prophet to reveal those things. Yet people be technical. Hebrews chapter 1. God who at Sunday times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. As did Moses, Elijah, everybody else. Had in this last days, when Paul was around, last days spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he had made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Now, in 1966, we moved down to Railway Street and I was riding a bicycle. I was coming from where Haribais is and uh, turned to the Watson Highway with, with a bike to go home. And one, I, I didn't have, the brakes were faulty in the bike. And uh, one van, Barnett's furniture, flatbed, you know, van was coming, the guy knocked. Uh, but, uh, the father was coming from work and saw the accident and didn't worry. Uh, he didn't think. Then I said, call my father, give him his name and all that. And then told him, he rushed and came there. He was shocked. Uh, anyhow, I went to hospital. I met a few people, the king and the hospital. And uh, there, 1960, I met a lot of people, different people. There was another guy. We, before that, we lived in uh, uh, Asheville, Dunnett Avenue, and probably about five or six doors away across the road, there was a policeman was working with my father. And uh, I saw a guy just like him in the bed. You know, he worked with my father now. He looks much younger. I'm, well, I'm about. 14 years old. And he looked, I would expect him working my father to be older. So in the house, uh, chatting to him and then he told me he's the same person. I told him, you know what I told him, I still remember. I said, I thought you were your son. <laughs> I thought you were your son. You know, I, I knew the man and he look, I, he, I knew him to exactly like that and I said he couldn't be yeah. Those years have passed, obviously. So, yeah. Not realizing. It was him himself. Him. Similar thing here now. Amen. That's right. The father and the son. There might be a difference, but they're one and the same person. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, it's no more thought that Jesus is the son. 
but we realize he's the same person mm -hmm. all over. The title of the Sunday is given to you. Next slide, verse 4. <laughs> Being made so much better than angels, so he was not just a man, as yet by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. More excellent name than angels than any other name, right? For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be a father and he shall be a son. He didn't say that to any of the angels. Next slide, verse 6. And again, when he bring it in the first begotten unto the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. First begotten was Jesus. Let all the angels worship him. God would want nobody to worship anybody else. Amen. But himself. Amen. Yet he wants him to worship Jesus. Angel, even angel. And the angel said, uh, and, and of the angels he said, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, to the Son, Thy throne, O God. Amen. Who is speaking? The Father. Amen. says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness. It's a scepter of thy kingdom. Amen. Now, that means there's another God. If he is God, and he's saying the Son is God. And the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Because he's God. Now, that is what was spoken of the Son by the eternal Spirit. All through the Old Testament, he received a more excellent name, Jehovah God. And by calling him his son, not just a son, but the only begotten son like Isaac. Abraham had more sons, but he says the only son, he told Abraham to sacrifice. And he would express all that the Father was as a spirit down through the Old Testament. The fullness of the Godhead would dwell in him this created body. Fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Jesus Christ. Now, the fullness of the Godhead is his bride. Amen. He came to show us the way. The bride will have a new name and he will have a new name. He will take on a new name. Slide number... 38 I think it is. The name of God is exalted in the Old and New Testaments. Name of God is exalted. You know. Just as the name of God was stressed in the Old Testament, so was the name of God stressed and exalted in the New Testament. The same tendency to exalt God's name and to praise and call upon his name in Old Testament reading is continued in the New Testament writings. Amen. But the name mentioned and stressed and exalted and praised in the New Testament is Jesus. Amen. All throughout the Bible, the name of God was to be praised, exalted and thought about. Praise the name of the Lord. Start 40. Psalm 34 verse 3 Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Exalt, put his name up. No other name will be exalted. Psalm 11 Praise you the Lord. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. No ending. Lord's name to be praised and he will not share his glory with anybody else. Praise the name of the Lord. Slide number 42. Acts number 8 verse 12. And when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. That's why they baptized the name of Jesus Christ. So when they believed, they must believe in the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. John preached, we are repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus preached in Matthew 4, the repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. 
So we preach of the kingdom of God that is within us and we've got to preach on the name of Jesus. Do we glorify ourselves? Do we glorify our church? And do we glorify Brother Brandon? Do we glorify anybody else? But the person that needs to be glorified is Jesus Christ. Amen. The early church preached in such a manner that it caused onlookers, including critics, to comment on how they preached the name of Jesus. Remember, they want to stop them from preaching in the name of Jesus. This is what they preached. They preached over and over the name of Jesus. The prevailing revelation was that God was with us and has become our Savior. The denomination world won't like us when we talk about William Bradham. When we part of the God's unfolding time that we're living in, it, we've got to talk about it, but we don't overemphasize him, we don't magnify him, we appreciate what he has done. Acts chapter 4, verse 10, slide number 44. Be it known unto you that all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. So they always magnified the name of Jesus. And it goes on. Next slide. And when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them. And they dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further amongst the people. Didn't want it to spread out. Let us straight away threaten them that they speak henceforth no, to no man in his name. And they called him and he commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. Didn't like that. Pure evil. Then. Praise the name of the Lord. Like uh, I was counseling the couple, you know, and uh, I said, okay, what if your wife goes and doubts you? What would you do? He says, divorce. I said, what if he goes and doubts you? She'll divorce. I said, there's another alternative too. You can forgive. Amen. That's right. I said, can you stand in the presence of God and ask God to forgive you your sins when you can't forgive somebody else? Right, you know, the Bible does and now and as I said, you know, being hard you know, if a man abuses his wife and even if a wife abuses her husband, husband will keep quiet. I said, leave them. But you can't marry again. Don't wait to be hit until you're dying or until you're dead. Then you you the first time don't entertain you. Then you find that they will tension up and maybe after a year or so they'll realize you're serious about this, then maybe they'll come back and things might change. Now, so when I told him those things, then he said, yeah, uh, I said, you know, you can't forgive. You know, you know, There's said, not yeah. much love there. Yeah. <laughs> I said, uh, then she said, no, the reason she said she wanted to create fear in you. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't going to do it. Now, the reason they hit those people and stop them from preaching in the name they don't want the message to go out. Persecuted them. Praise the Lord. The Jews didn't care much about the apostles uh, that declared the God of the Old Testament, but they couldn't see him. In his unfolding revelation as Jesus, Jehovah Savior, yet without that name, they couldn't be saved. Galatians 3.17 And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name Amen. of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Imagine you praising Jesus, thanking Him, but God gets the glory too, because He's, you know. Now that was the reputation of the New Testament saints that they had received. They were accused over and over again of using this name, worshipping this name, and preaching salvation in this name. As we saw in Acts chapter 4, the name was literally preached. It was stressed. This is not so today amongst many churches due to the Trinitarian doctrine which overshadowed the name of Jesus Christ being the supreme name 
uh, revealing God's character. Many years ago, probably in the early 90s, I preached in Brother Roscoe's church. Very nice message. They did record it in DVD. They gave me a copy. I didn't lend it to a few people. I lent it to one denomination guy I was working with at that time. He enjoyed it. Then he watched it with his pastor. I said, what? He said, no, I said, no, you'll talk about Brandon and all that. Now that message, as far as I recall, I only used one quote of Brother Brandon. That was when I read the scripture and I read the quote. Uh, and I, all was scripture and everything else after that. Uh, and I use, I, and I all, when we, when I, you know, when I preach, I quote Spurgeon, I quote uh, uh, Billy Graham, I quote uh, Abraham Lincoln, I quote different people. I like to quote many, many other people. So we're not just quoting William Graham. So I asked him, uh, I quoted uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Were you offended? I said, no. I asked him, I quoted uh, uh, Billy Graham. Were you offended? No. I asked him, I quoted other people. He said, no. Only was upset because I used William Graham. What did he say? I sent one message to the um, minister in the church this morning and I sent it to some other people. Uh, this one denomination guy said, he might say it to you. Uh, he said, um, it took 10 seconds to, or 10, or 10 minutes to preach Peter on the day of Pentecost. 10 minutes to preach to 3,000 people, and the 3,000 people were saved. But we don't realize it, may, it took 10 hours to pray before preparing the sermon. Why prepare the sermon? Amen. More Amen. prayer should be spent, more time should be spent in prayer than even studying the Word of God. Then the sermon can be short, but to the point. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus himself said in John 5 43, we read the scripture, I come in my Father's name. If another come in his own name, him he will receive. In Revelation 14, verse 1 says, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred uh, uh, and forty-eight and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. The Jewish people, they didn't have Jehovah, they had the name of Jesus. That means when they received Jesus as Savior. There's no way anybody going to be saved in any other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So those Jewish people will have to receive this message in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Father's name had to be written on the foreheads. In other words, the identity was to be their name. There will be people of his name. And what is the name of the Father? Revelation 22 verse 3, slide number 10 over 50. Revelation 22 verse 3. Remember we said the name of the Father on the forehead. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in the foreheads. Who's name? The Lamb. Amen. That's right. So the Lamb's name is Jesus. The same invisible God's face. Amen. Amen. What is the Lamb's name? Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. In Ephesians 3, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Amen. Whole family name after the name of Jesus. Not only here, heaven and earth. Every child of a man bears his father's name. So we bear the name of Jesus. Acts 15 verse 14, slide number 54. Simeon had declared how God <laughs> at first did visit the Gentiles and take out of them a people for his name. So we are taken for his name, not the name of a denomination or organization, but the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember the title? Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. 
These will be people identified by him and their identity will be his name. Father's name, the Lamb's name will be in the forehead. Not going to be two names on the forehead. One name. God informed Israel that throughout the world he wanted a people called by his name. The name of God was a distinguishing factor given to Israel to separate them from all other people of the earth. They were going to be a people for his name. But they couldn't see. That's why the temple was, the veil was rent from top to bottom. The point of the lamb was no more there. The lamb was Jesus Christ. They don't have worship where they can take the lamb into a temple, offer for the atonement, because the lamb is Jesus Christ. They have to see if it becomes. Revelation 3.12, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Amen. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He'll have a new name. Jesus is the highest name of God Amen. ever revealed to mankind. Praise the name of the Lord. The church will never be on the right foundation unless it believes in the supreme deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the highest revelation of God. He is Mount Catholic, the priest. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh, provider. Jehovah Nisi, my banner. He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Everything is encapsulated in that one name, Amen. Jesus. The name of Jesus is the highest of all names. There is not a greater revelation of God than in Jesus. Amen. And from him comes all other revelations. If Jesus is incarnate, then Jesus is the greatest name ever revealed. Matthew 121, you shall call his name Jesus, which is God with us. Salvation from sin is only in the name of Jesus. The given name was a direct fulfillment of the prophecy in Isaiah 7 14. <clears throat> Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the Lord. Matthew one twenty three, he said, God with us. Praise the Lord. The name of Jesus incorporates all the character and identity of God. Just as Moses saw a a characteristic of God that Abraham did not see that being deliverance. Now we see something that even Moses didn't see. Amen. The name of Jesus is the highest name ever given because it was Jehovah coming to save. Philippians 3, 2 verse 9 says, Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name including his name. Given him a name which is above every name. So Paul emphatically teaches that Jesus is a name above every name. Amen. Therefore, if Jesus is not God's name, then we have a person who possesses a name greater than God's own name. Amen. Can't, that can't happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isaiah prophesied, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And that was fulfilled in Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus, 
every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So Jesus is not the greatest name on earth only. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. Jesus is the highest name of all names. For there is no other name given among men whereby we might be saved. There is no salvation when you invoke Melchizedek's name or El Shaddai's name or any other name. Praise the name of the Lord. The last scripture we're going to read today, Acts chapter 4 verse 10, slide number 71. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand whole. This is a stone which was set at not of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby they must be saved. The name of Jesus. So, coming to know God as any other name is not going to help you. You've got to know him in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you know the name of Jesus? You need to know. Praise the name. Shall we stand? As we sing the chorus. In the name of Jesus.